You're tuned into Visions, a business and community affairs program designed to encourage and promote entrepreneurship in Central Alabama. Thanks for tuning in to another edition of Vision. Cedric Vaughn, and we're excited to have our guest back in the studio with us, the Honorable Mayor of the City of Tuskegee, Mayor Tony Haygood, Lawrence Tony Haygood. Mr. Haygood, thanks for being with us again on the program. Great to be here. Great All to right, be here. All right, Mayor, well, you know, it's been a few months since we had a chance to talk, probably around February or so, and with, at that time we were talking about the Labor Day Classic that was oh, coming yeah. up, and so now it is upon us. It's upon us. We're excited about it, uh, the return of the Classic, you know, the, Rivalry with Alabama State and Tuskegee University has been going on since 1924. So we're just very excited and pleased that, um, to see that the classic is back. And it's not Turkey Day now, it's Labor Day. Right. And everyone is uh, kind of aware of it now and it's, it's really here. And so the excitement is really uh, kind of pumped up on it at yeah. this time. Yeah, it really is. And, uh, you know, we see a lot of parties and activities that are springing up that are associated with it. Oh, and yeah. And uh, I think alumni on both sides are excited to be able to come back and, and, uh, and go at it again. But, but, but beyond that, it's a great opportunity for camaraderie and, oh, uh, yes. and uh, empowerment and entrepreneurship. Yeah, that's a, that's a key thing that we recognize that we have a lot of people coming back from different parts of the country as well as, you know, joining those here. And we're talking about networking opportunities, getting the businesses together, uh, Alabama State University and Tuskegee University working together to, to capitalize on the event in terms of the networking we can do with businesses, the different entrepreneurs, especially younger entrepreneurs that have launched businesses. Mm -hmm. So we'll have an event uh, on that Friday that will deal with networking, bringing business people together, mm -hmm. uh, community leaders together to see what we can do stronger between Tuskegee and Montgomery mm -hmm. in terms of interaction with the business opportunities mm -hmm. that we have. Mm -hmm. So it's a great time because you, you match the rivalry of the game yeah. and the selling the wolf tickets and that kind of yes, thing. That's and, right, that's right. And uh, talking about the, the uh, Alabama State and the Hornet, but you got the Tuskegee Tiger that's roaring mighty loud. Yeah, that's right, so that's right, that's right. We're excited about the whole activity and bringing people together to see what we can do. Well, it's, it's a great, great uh, rivalry, great matchup. We're really excited. Um, and But uh, one of the things you're working on in it is collaboration. I think you went over and met with the uh, interim president, Wilson. Yes, yeah, sure uh, did. At, at, uh, at Alabama State uh, well, about it. We met with uh, interim president Wilson. Uh, he was very receptive and very positive. We met with other key people at Alabama State and WVAS over there. And so uh, they've been very responsive to it. And that's what was key. We wanted people to understand, while this is a great rivalry, we wanted to bring people together to look at the opportunities that we can share. We talked to Dr. Morris, the interim president at Tuskegee University. Mm -hmm. She and her staff are excited about it. Mm -hmm. We talked to Mayor Strange here in Montgomery. Mm -hmm. Then my office is Mayor of the city of Tuskegee and the council. So everybody's plugging into it because we see it as a major opportunity for this region uh, to, to expand and capitalize on business that goes on here mm -hmm. and to exchange information and see how we can grow together in this region and this community. Well, you know, one of the things that, uh, you know, I know about you uh, uh, as we've known each other a few years is that you're really into economic development. That's really kind of your niche and specialty. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, anytime we see opportunities for economic development, we want to try to uh, see how we can expand upon that. Uh, Montgomery is looking at the op possibility of the F-35 being located here out of the 187th at Danley Field. We have the opportunity for a T-100 jet trainer aircraft through Leonardo of Italy working with CAE and Honeywell, and that would be at Tuskegee at Moton Field, mm -hmm. and that'd be a major aircraft uh, industry in Tuskegee uh, that would affect the whole region. 750 jobs right there in Tuskegee. The other day we had uh, 30 to 40 suppliers that came to the community to look at locating throughout the area that would supply that plant mm -hmm. there in Tuskegee. So it's going to affect all of us, and so I think some great opportunities for both communities around the area of aviation. That's good. That's good. And uh, I think I went to a meeting um, with uh, some of the uh, Leonardo, Leonardo officials and one of the things that I heard them say was the long-time relationship between Tuskegee and the Tuskegee Airmen and, and the Italians. That's critical. You know, uh, you never know what, when you plant a seed at some point and you do something for people and with people, how that may return to you. And that's what we see this as. The Italians uh, actually were not, the Leonardo was not going to locate in Tuskegee originally. Okay. But then they started looking into locations in the southeast and they came back to the idea of Tuskegee. They remember that the Tuskegee Airmen came during World War II and came to Italy, particularly uh, at the airfield there in Italy, 
and what they did for the people of Italy, and they really, really appreciated it. So they mm. wanted to come back and reconnect with Tuskegee based on what the Tuskegee Airmen did mm. and their record and their reception over there. Well, and, that, and that's, that's one of the things that, you know, we talk about and that you preach is relationships. And basically oh, what, yes. what they were saying is that they have a great relationship and they want to keep it going. Oh, yes. And when they came, what was interesting, when they came and met with us there at Moton Field to look at the site and consider locating there, we had a great exchange. And then they saw the museum, the history of Tuskegee Airmen, the base at Ramatelli in Italy, and it just brought back those memories and the discussion just expanded. And it was just a great time. So it's a natural fit and they really plugged into it and they decided this was going to be the location for the entire plant. And that's mm -hmm. how we ended up instead of 100 jobs, as was talked about at first, with the whole plant being put there, the sub-assembly, final assembly, everything, research, and 750 jobs. And, and that's, that was the point I wanted to, uh, to make, uh, that uh, <coughs> the projection for the number of jobs is 750 uh, when everything is completed. Now that will include engineering, that will be production, that will be the whole gamut that's right. that goes with uh, constructing, uh, you know, uh, this type of uh, manufacturing. Yeah, that, that jet trainer, uh, it's a serious jet, and so you're going to have most, a lot of engineering jobs. You have a lot of other related jobs to that. So it's going to be great opportunities for this area, for the uh, employment opportunities in this area, but yeah. you have opportunities for a lot of businesses yeah. because we will build, if awarded the contract, we'll have to build a $200 million facility there at Moton Field. So those contractors who are here, who have um, businesses, will have opportunity to make bids on particular contracts. You have other opportunities for entrepreneurs in maintenance, security, all kinds of areas. So it's not just engineering, which will be some good jobs there, but you'll have other opportunities for smaller businesses to plug in to a major industry coming into the area that's going to need all kinds of services. So if you've got a service business, if you're an entrepreneur, you want to step up your game, have your resume and your, and your employment history or your service history there so you can say, hey, we're here, we can provide this service for you. Well, and, that, and that's one of the things you were saying before we came in is that I think uh, the, the target for when, I guess, construction will be completed or uh, be at that phase of, of hiring is it two years? Yeah, basically it'll be about two years. The uh, contract should be awarded probably toward the end of December, at latest the first part of January. Well, once the contract is awarded, it's going to take about two years to actually build a plant. So within a few months after the award, they'll come in and start to determine what needs to be done. And so certain contracts will be put out related to the construction. But the actual <coughs> opening of the plant is scheduled for about two years away, Okay, 2019. Right. And so your, your point on it two years away for the opening of the plant is for entrepreneurs and business owners to build their capacity now. Exactly. Build your capacity build your, uh, your resume in terms of your business, in terms of your performance, to show what you've done with other businesses and what you're capable of doing. Uh, get your business side ready. So if you have to step up and get more equipment or more employees, or you've got to go to the bank, you want to have your background ready, your financial sta standing ready, so that you can step up to a larger contract. Because mm -hmm. it's going to be a major business out there. And we want to see as many entrepreneurs as possible take advantage of those services that they can provide. That's good. That's good. Well, I just think it's, uh, it's a great opportunity, and uh, everybody's been working hard. You've, been, uh, you've seen the governor. You've been talking to your congressional delegation. Oh, yes. It's been a full court press. A uh, full court <laughs> press. Been to Washington two times, seen wow. everybody from Senator Shelby, Senator Strange, uh, Mike Rogers and his entire staff, even uh, uh, Congresswoman Roby here in Montgomery is plugged into it with Mike Rogers. So we're very pleased that everyone's getting on board, uh, along with the governor, to support this, uh, the chambers, yeah. Uh, involved and that's why it's so important with the Labor Day Classic reception we're having mm -hmm. uh, to connect with people because we want to connect both communities to understand we have great opportunities in Montgomery and Tuskegee to take advantage of aviation uh, expansion in our region. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. Well, I, I I really like it. I think it's it's a great opportunity and and certainly. Uh, you're the uh, right person to uh, lead this charge, but it's a whole team. Like, like we say, it does take a village. Oh, yeah. It takes a village. So the, it takes village a village is working. <laughs> and, uh, and the team always wins. I don't care if, uh, what, what fan you are, what team is Auburn, Alabama, Troy, Tuskegee, ASU. You got to have a good team. Yeah. You got to have good heads at the team yeah. and people working together. And that's what we want to do. We want to drive the spirit of rivalry with the Labor Day Classic and the reception. We want to drive the spirit of working together. Mm -hmm. Uh, building new networks, uh, rel new relationships, new companionships, so that uh, we know each other. I know what you can do, mm -hmm. you know what I can do. 
I can call on you, you can call on me, you can call on the, your friends. We're bringing in people to, to, to take advantage of mm -hmm. what they, their capabilities are mm -hmm. and make them available to other people who may not know about those capabilities. You know a lot of good folks mm -hmm. that have uh, uh, skills and abilities and businesses that can provide services. We need to share that with some other people. Well, that's, that's a good segue to what we wanted to talk about uh, as it relates to relationships. We've got some friends and partners who've been, uh, who've been uh, helping us with the program over the years. And uh, I, I said to them that Mayor Hager from Tuskegee was coming to be with us and, uh, and uh, I let them know that we wanted to recognize them. Now, uh, when it comes to entrepreneurship, there's one entrepreneur that we want to recognize and that's Hobson Cox with oh, yeah. Affordable Eyewear. Ms. Hager knows him. Uh, and uh, he's been doing work this year, celebrates his 30-year uh, anniversary in business. Oh, that's tremendous. Uh, downtown there yeah. on, uh, on, uh, on Madison Avenue, and so he was certainly one of the first uh, supporters of this program. He has another location uh, on Debbie Drive. He's expanded. He also has a location uh, in Union Springs. And that's so, great. Uh, so we want to recognize Hobson, thank him for all of his support. He provides our glasses, and uh, he's been doing that for 20 years. Another great entrepreneur uh, who has built the heritage complex over on Carter Hill Road is, is uh, Vladimir Booman Avery. <laughs> and uh, he's there at uh, 1334 Carter Hill Road. He's been in business about 20 two years or so, and so I call him, he's a super hornet. I mean, there's not a bigger, <laughs> there's not a bigger ASU fan than uh, Vladimir. We appreciate his spirit. He was recognized and going to be recognized this year as a leading 50 under 50 alumnus. And so he got a great team, Kenyatta Hassel, Zach James, uh, uh, Kirby Fortenberry, uh, Otis Stinson. He's got a guy that does your shoes. I call him the shoe man. His oh, name okay. is uh, Otis Stinson. He did mine yesterday. So we, we've, uh, these are just some examples of, of some of the great entrepreneurs in this area. We want to see them. But, but Mayor uh, also wanted to recognize a great educator uh, from Macon County, and that's Dr. Jacqueline Brooks. Oh, yes, our superintendent. Uh, she About 30 got seconds. Yeah. Uh, nominated to be head uh, uh, president of superintendents, I think. Uh -huh. uh, she does a good job of making kind of with our young people, yeah. and we applaud her for the work that she's done and the progress we made. Yeah, excellent, excellent. Well, we're, we're going to look to see all of them around the Labor Day class. We're very excited, excited about this T100 opportunity that's coming on, and um, uh, Mayor, I'm going to look to see you around the uh, the Labor Day uh, events. I'm going to come to that reception uh, okay. that you're hosting for the community, uh, and that's going to do it for us on this segment uh, of Visions. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, please stay tuned to our next segment, uh, and uh, we'll be right back and right after this. <laughs>